And welcome. Okay, happy new moon. So this is like kind of a special new moon because the new moon is in Cancer just, you know, a few short hours ago, technically the exact moment. But now the moon has already moved into Leo, right? So it's kind of like this juxtaposition of Cancer and Leo around this new moon. So we're going to learn about both of those today, kind of in a little bit more of an abbreviated way, as well as the essences that support those. And then we'll do a new moon ritual, which you can kind of pick and choose how you want to do it and participate in it um, based on the Cancer watery energy or the Leo kind of fiery energy. So, um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm going to kind of uh, just take a second and mute everybody. You can always unmute yourself if you have a question or something, um, but just to take the sound part out. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Sheridan Semple. I am a shamanic astrologer and a spiritual medicinal aromatherapist and a holistic health practitioner and all that kind of good stuff. And we are going to learn today about the new moon a little bit, just at, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Astronomically. And then um, we'll learn about the signs of Cancer and Leo. And then we'll learn about Neroli and Jasmine, these two like blossom essences, which are really great for stress, which I feel like so many of us are feeling a lot of stress and have been for months now. And then we'll end with our new moon intention setting ceremony. So if you want to have, if you have any essential oils, if you have jasmine neroli, if you don't, that's totally fine. You may want a pen, a piece of paper, if you want to write down your intentions, and you may want either a glass of water or a candle or something like that. But again, you don't have to, we'll still create the ceremony together. Um, okay, so just before we get started, let's just kind of drop in. If you have some essences, you could start to use them now and just start kind of connecting into um you know your seat where you're sitting just feel the earth underneath you you can close your eyes if you like to and just kind of let go of anything that may have happened before you arrived here today um if there's any you know things going on let's just kind of let that go and just be here now to quote Ram Dass, and um, feel your seed and just kind of start to feel the earth supported underneath you, that place where you can feel the magnetism of the earth just dropping you down into where you're just held by the earth, um, supported by the earth, the physicality of the world that we live in. And just let yourself settle so you start to kind of feel grounded. If you're using the essences, you can just let the spirit of the plant just start to help drop you in and connect you into the earth more because that's the place that we're on that this astrology we connect to from. Um, just taking a few breaths, let the breath drop down into your abdomen, your belly. Feel your hips, your seat, maybe your feet on the floor. And just see if you can start to feel your energy reach down to the earth and the energy of the earth reach back up to you. So you can feel your energies kind of commingling like water or air circulating. And then from that grounded place, bring your attention to wherever the sun is in the sky right now, wherever that might be for you. And know that that's where the new moon is right now as well. They're traveling together. That's what makes the new moon. So just start to feel that energy drip down from the sun, from the sky, from the moon, down in through the crown, the top of your head, and down into your body, into your heart. 
that grounded place where you connect into the earth, all commingling, all mixing together. And just begin to think, you know, what is it that you would like to create out of this new moon cycle? This time of the start of the moon cycle, planting seeds. What might you want to create for yourself out of this time? What could be your intention? Because the new moon is the beginning of the moon cycle. And it's the time to plant the seeds of what your intention is during this moon cycle. It's time of the new beginning, kind of a reset point of the month. What do you want your focus to be this month? It could be doing something, but it could also just be a being intention as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be this big action taking thing, just something for yourself. And taking a couple of breaths into your heart. We will begin the class. So as you feel ready, I'm going to share my screen and we are going to look at a few slides and it just takes a second because we're on Zoom for everything to get rolling here. Okay, so here's the chart of the new moon, which was at 11.33 a.m. Mountain Time, so 1.33 Eastern Time. And um, you can see here, we'll look at this a little bit more later, but you can see right there is the moon and the sun traveling together in Cancer, right? So that's what the new moon is, is when the sun and the moon are conjunct. And we're going to learn about kind of some other things that are going on big today as well and have been going on. We've been talking about through all of these classes as well, but kind of some big stuff is sort of extra lit up today. So here is a picture of the astronomy of a new moon is the sun and then where we are on the earth and you can see the different parts. So you may know the astronomy, you may not, but the new moon is when the moon and the sun are together so we can't see the, see the moon. <clears throat> and the full moon's on the opposite, right? When all the sun's light is shining on the moon and that's where like the eclipse can happen when we get in between those two, which we experienced, um, the last full moon. Okay, and then here is part of what's going on today with the sun here, the earth here, and the sun is at opposition. So it's almost like the sun, the Saturn, sorry, Saturn is at opposition. Saturn is like kind of in a full moon today, which we'll talk about all that at the end for sure. And this is a very blurry picture that I downloaded from earthsky.org, but I still wanted to kind of give you the visual even though it's blurry. Okay, so let's dive into these, um, these energies, right? So what is Cancer? What is Leo? So Cancer is a water sign. And shamanic astrology, that means it's, it's part of that feeling function, right? So not necessarily emotions, because like fire signs can have emotions and earth signs can have emotions. But the feeling function, that place where you kind of feel something and you know it in your body, right? That empathy kind of a place, that's what water's all about. A cancer is also an in-service to the culture or community sign. So it's a giving sign. It can be, um, it's very like focused on its people, its tribe that it's taking care of. It's right-brained and it's feminine. So we're gonna kind of juxtaposition that against Leo. So right brain, kind of that more circular type of thinking rather than really linear and a feminine energy. We don't mean female, right? Men can be cancer too, but it's a feminine type of energy archetypally or archetypally. Um, and it's an involution sign, which is the first time we started talking about that was our last class. So involution means uh, water signs and air signs, they bring 
spirit down into matter, right? The physicality of the body for a specific reason. And cancer, part of why it does that is to be that archetypal mother, right? That's what cancer is all about. Again, uh, male or female, it's just about that nurturing energy, that unconditionally loving energy, right? Of the healthy mother archetype. Cancer creates a safe space for us to be vulnerable. It nourishes a seed or a child or a project or something to fruition or maturity. So it's kind of a perfect new moon sign for us because it's nourishing this seed, the seed of our intention at the new moon to fruition or maturity over this next month. And it's the second cancer new moon we've had this month, right? Not July, but over the last moon cycle, the last new moon was in cancer as well, which is, doesn't happen all the time. So it's kind of like double extra cancer energy. Uh, cancer is all about responsible parenting, whatever that looks like. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own biological children, but parenting something, care, caring. <clears throat> cancer is all about investigating feelings, empathy, and compassion. And it's a lot about learning about being a healthy giver. So depending upon where cancer might be on your chart, or you may not even have any cancer and you're just kind of swimming in the soup of the cancer energy we've been in for the past month with the sun and cancer and the moon a couple of times. If, you know, different parts of your chart, you may already be really good at cancer or it could be something you're learning about or it's just something that's like foreign because it's not even on your chart, right? So you may already be good at giving or you may be learning about becoming a healthy giver, right? So these things can play out in different ways on our charts. And then Leo is totally different, but there is some similarity. So Leo is fire, right? It's totally different energy than water. It's about intuition. It's the intuitive realm. That's what fire is all about and learning about is that just knowing and like going and taking action with things. It's what we call a self-exploration sign. So it's really here just to learn about fire, not about being in service to the culture or community. It's just here for its own experience and exploration of like fire and intuition and taking action and that kind of thing. It's also right brained like cancer. So it's that more circular type of thinking rather than very like linear left brain but it's a masculine energy. Again, that doesn't mean male, right? It's not about gender. It's about the archetypal energy, right? Masculine energy and, um, or like yang, right? You, that's another way you could um, use it. Like yin is feminine, masculine is yang. If you're um, familiar with like uh, the uh, Chinese idea. And then it's what we consider an evolutionary sign. So involution is bringing spirit into matter. It's kind of going down towards the earth. Evolution is about going up and out towards spirit, okay? So all the signs have a spiritual path. It's not that involution isn't spiritual and evolution is. It's just a different direction of where they're going to on their spiritual path. And Leo is the archetypal king or queen energy, right? It's the lion represented here. Leo is all about being creator, right? Seeing its own divinity, its own sovereignty, its own, um, that it can just kind of make it up as it wants to go along, right? It's, uh, it's kind of learning about its own like godliness or goddessness in a way, right? That we're all, we all have that, but Leo is really here to express that or to learn about that or to cultivate that energy within itself. Again, depending upon where it is in the chart. But so as the moon is moving into Leo, the moon is just kind of lighting up this energy for all of us, whether we have Leo on our chart or not. Leo is all about being seen, right? Kind of showing up big. It's also about learning this really deep, radical, intense self-love, right? That's one of the biggest things that Leo is about is 
learning self-love or expressing self-love in a really like healthy way, right? That's not arrogance, right? When someone's arrogant, it's usually because they're insecure. Being around someone who really loves and appreciates themselves, it feels good to us, right? It gives us permission to love ourselves. That's what Leo is about, right? It's very magnanimous so that kind of self-love can sort of spill over um, and infect the rest of us as well. Uh, Leo is learning about, or may already be, very comfortable being who they are. Um, they can be a lot about like a very like visionary type of leaders or leadership. And again, it's that sovereignty, right? Being their own autonomous central self. So like cancer is really about relationships, right? The mother to, its seed, its child, its project, some type of relationship serving the culture and community. Leo is about its own self. It's not as much about all of these relationships, but we're looking at these things in a vacuum. So different things on your chart could make you more relationship oriented, even if you have a lot of Leo, right? But in and of itself, Leo is more about learning about itself and its own experience and then it gives from that place but that's a kind of a secondary thing that happens for leo um so when we get to the kind of q a i'm interested to hear your perspectives on what it feels like to you transitioning from this cancer energy into this kind of leo energy and what um what you all might be experiencing or, or how you think that transition can go because the signs that are right next to each other don't always have a ton in common. So they can feel kind of like big shifts sometimes. So I'm looking forward to asking you that. Um, okay, and then let's learn about the essential oil. So neroli is, the, is an essential oil that comes from the blossom, the flower of the orange tree, okay? And orange trees, interestingly, are one of the few plants they give us multiple essential oils. So we get neroli from the flower, we get orange oil from the rind of the oranges, and then we get orange pettigrain from the leaves. So most plants give us one specific type of essential oil from one part of the plant, but the orange tree gives from all parts, which I think is kind of cool. So this is part of why I think it's such a cancerian type of energy specifically. Um, let me see if there's anything else I have in my notes I want to say about neroli. Um, it's these really fragrant flowers. So if you've ever smelled the flowers off of any citrus tree, they're so like sweet and yummy. Um, it's native to Southeast Asia and then it's spread from there into India and Persia. It now grows in like the Mediterranean, California, South America, but it's not native to these areas. It grows up to about like 32 feet tall, so it's not a super high, huge tree. Um, and it's the essential oil is steam distilled from these blossoms. And the one that I have comes from Egypt. And Neroli has all of these different amazing uses. So the spiritual and emotional uses are... Um, uh, it promotes emotional intelligence. Uh, it's about developing an inner trust within ourselves, right? So that's kind of a part of that Cancerian place. Um, it reunites our fragmented parts into wholeness, very Cancerian. It's emotionally mothering. Some people will say that it's kind of like getting a hug from mom, right? Um, it brings feelings of security and protection and being loved, very Cancerian, opens the heart, self-acceptance. It stabilizes the heart and mind, so it's calming. It eases emotional and mental tension. Anxiety, depression, despair, sadness, these are all uses for neroli, right? You can just put it on your forehead and it's like soothing and calms the mind down calms the nervous system down. Soothing, grounding, euphoric. It helps you to release repressed emotions and helps those that are easily stressed or alarmed, like people that have a really heightened sensitivity. Um, it, it, neroli is amazing for that. Physical uses is it's a tonic. 
So it tonifies the nervous system. It helps with restlessness and agitation, insomnia, because it's a sedative. Palpitations, so heart palpitations, hypertension, high blood pressure. It clears heat out of the body. And um, it's really good for a nervous stomach or intestines. Again, a, a cancerian type of issues, abdominal spasm, colic, diarrhea. It's also antiviral. It's helpful with strep and staph. And it's antibacterial. And then jasmine, another amazing blossom essence, which again, I picked these because blossom essences are so good for stress. Um, jasmine is this hardy evergreen shrub. So it's, uh, um, it's not really like a tree the way an orange tree is, it's a shrub. Although it can grow up to multiple feet the same way that the orange tree can. Um, there's some hundred, like 300 species of jasmine. So there's tons of different kinds of jasmine. It's native to Northern India, Persia, and China. And it now grows around the Mediterranean, North Africa. Um, the world's largest producer is Egypt, which is the jasmine that I have comes from Egypt. And it's also, it's an absolute. So it's not steam distilled because the blossoms won't release and make an essential oil. So it's kind of this, a modernized way of getting essential oils um, with an extractant, uh, which is how they kind of made essential oils in the a long, long, long ago. Now it's much more modernized from that. But Jasmine is amazing for Leo, I think, because its spiritual and emotional uses are divine inspiration, right? That's all Leo, divinity, inspiration, um, knowing all that is, having a connection to spirit, right? This is all in Leo's realm, symbol of love, Leo, Leo, self-love for oneself and then out to others, completely Leo, spiritual longing, uh, reawakening passion, enhancing intuition, infertility of the spirit and soul, lovingly helps you work on anger issues. That's a big one that Jasmine's known for. It supports a journey into your own heart and transformation. Its physical uses is it's known as an aphrodisiac. Um, it's helpful with frigidity and impetus, um, impotence specifically that's like due to fear and vulnerability and anxiety and depression or like thoughts of inadequacy or undesirability. That's where it really is helpful with that. Um, it's good for painful menstrual cycles um, and uh, women going into labor. Um, it's good for the urogenital organs, so the kidneys, the ureters, bladder, all of that, any kind of discharges. It's a liver cleanser that's part of the works on anger issues and promotes lactation. So it's, a, it's an amazing one for women in particular. Um, okay, so then let's go into our new moon ritual, right? So this is just all all about working consciously with the cycles that are happening in and around us, right? That's why we do a new moon ritual or ceremony, right? It's just to connect ourselves to the earth, to the sky, what's happening with the moon, and sort of co-create our lives with what's happening in the energy that we're in. So um, <clears throat> one thing I like to say too is, Pick one intention, one seed that you want to plant for this moon cycle. I think one thing is like plenty to focus on throughout this time coming up rather than like trying to change everything in your whole entire life over one month, you know? So I like to set, you know, at the solstices kind of a intentions for the year, for the next six months, and then use each moon cycle to kind of help me along that path is one way that I like to do it. And so as we start to move into creating our intention, again, you can just settle back into that grounded place. And under this new moon, I am grateful for a new beginning. I invite my soul, my guides and spirit to guide me in setting my intention for this moon cycle. 
honoring my ancestors and my indigenous roots. I connect consciously to the new moon with my light, my heart, and love. May I be in alignment with spirit in setting an intention that supports the evolution of myself and my soul. I hold this knowing in my heart and trust that I will get there. I am one with the moon and spirit, and so it is. So now we'll just settle into what do you want your intention to be for this time? You're welcome to use your essences again to kind of connect you in a little more. Jasmine and Neroli, it smells divine. Um, so we'll just take a few minutes in silence to set our intention, maybe write our intention down so we're clear on what we are wanting to create over this moon cycle. Maybe it'll take one more minute for getting clear on your intention for this moon cycle, your one seed you want to plant now. And then depending upon whether you really want it to be a water ritual for the Cancer new moon or a fire ritual for the Leo <clears throat> moon energy that we're in now, you can either take a glass of water for the watery part and I'll just kind of share how to do each of them and then you pick what you want or you can do this later off of Zoom, whatever you like. But um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing the water, Everybody's muted, so no one will hear you, but I like to um, whisper my intention into the glass of water, the seed I want to plant, and then I drink it. Or if you want to do the fire one, you can either, you know, if you have an incense or if you have a candle, you can either burn what you've written on the piece of paper or you can speak it into the candle flame or the incense as well so that it's a way that you're bringing it out into the world. So I will mute myself while everyone can do their ceremony of choice here together.
And then either way you're doing it, it's like your intention is going into your body and going into all of your cells, or it's going up and out to connect with spirit and the energies, right? Either way, as within, so without, the same thing. All right, I'm going to share my screen again because I want to show you, let's talk about what's going on astrologically right now. <clears throat> and then we'll bring things to a close. <clears throat> okay, so we were looking at this chart and we saw the moon and the sun traveling together. But here is this stellium, right? These three planets we've been talking about for all of 2020 that are tra traveling together. You have going from um, left to right, you have Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, right? So I just want to keep talking about this because this is the intent that we're in. So from shamanic astrology perspective, we don't look and say that Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter traveling together are doing something to us. We say that it's showing an intent for all of us collectively, right? So personally, and collectively, okay? So it's a mirror reflection that as above, so below, right? It's a way that helps us see what our intent is for this time and helps us to more consciously navigate through it. So also right now, Saturn is exactly opposite the sun and the moon and this new moon. So we saw that picture, um, that blurry picture from earthsky.org. So that means this stellium, which I'll go into more, is like particularly illuminated and lit up right now while we're going through this new moon, right? While it's in this opposition. So all three of these planets are in Capricorn right now. That's what this glyph is. So that, that says there's a Capricornian type of intent, right? So an intent that is uh, for the community, for the culture, right? Um, uh, an intent to serve the community for the generations to come, right? And it's specifically done in a Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter type of way. So what does that mean? And so Saturn is all about um, uh, what is like working and what's not working right, in our systems, in our boundaries, in the way we spend our time, all of that, right? It's like this very kind of real world, middle world planet, like the material, physical realm of things. <clears throat> it has a lot in common with Saturn, I mean, with Capricorn itself. So those are resonant energies. So it's like, we can really see like, whoa, you know, everybody's at, at home and they're getting a sense of like, does that work for them? Does that not work for them? People have had to slow down a lot. Does that feel good? Or do you want to be like doing more things? You know, one of the things I've heard a lot is like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize like how much I needed a break and just stop just doing, 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 right? We're in such a culture of like, more, more, do more, bigger, better, right? And so people are getting an opportunity. Is that <clears throat> a system that is like working for me or not working for me, right? So that's kind of an example of Saturn intention. It kind of teaches us through boxing us in, but to help us gain greater freedom because it shows us what works and isn't working for us, right? So we're seeing that on like a, a collective level is like, racism is really at the forefront of a system that's not working, right? Um, you know, how we've been doing things, right? There's all kinds of stuff, examples. Pluto, what it does is it shows an intent for us to, to learn and um, become more empowered, but in a way that often feels very powerless, right? It's, uh, it's, it teaches us a lot about like, feeling and fear, right? So we are experiencing that. It's been a fearful, stressful, intense time as we're negotiating our new, what works and doesn't work for us, right? So it's showing us that we're going to have to kind of walk through a fear and a feeling of powerlessness to get to a place of what works and we're more in, in, empowered, right? So again, that can be up on the very personal level, like 
I feel like I've been having to work a lot about like boundaries and learning more about boundaries and it's like fearful and intense, right? So that, that's kind of like a Pluto Saturn on a personal level juxtaposition. And then Jupiter, what it does is it's just an expander. It's kind of like, like it, it drops like steroids on things. So whether it's fearful and intense, it gets amplified, or whether it's like peaceful and joyous, it gets amplified. So it's like we have Saturn and Pluto traveling together throughout this whole year, right? This whole intent of this year is those two teachers or like initiation cycles. And then with Jupiter there just means it's going to be super extra intense, which is exactly what we are all experiencing right now in a huge way and right now with the sun and moon being opposite saturn it can feel more lit up so this is something that's happening for all of us but depending upon your own unique chart these things could be really lighting up part of your own path or part of your lessons or things like that for you in a bigger way right so um so it's always good to kind of have a sense of what that is because astrology is really all about how do we navigate our lives consciously based on seeing that greater intent that we have for our lives so we can move through it uh, more easily or more consciously and intelligently. So, um, okay, I think that's all I have to share on the slides. And... Um, I will just say that we'll draw this to a close, but again, feel free to stay around for the Q&A and I'm happy to answer any questions about astrology, your charts, uh, aromatherapy, any of that, right? Off of the recording. Um, our next class will be on the Leo new moon on Tuesday, August 18th at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. And the essential oils we'll learn about for Leo will be cedarwood, Himalayan, and cystus, which a lot of people don't necessarily know about cystus. And you can always find me at SheridanSemple.com. And you can, um, you know, I have the oils that I work with there, the Wisdom of the Earth essential oils, or, or I do readings or any of that as well. So I just appreciate um, you being here today, whether you're here live or listening later. And happy new moon. And...